That's right, and they are struggling with this heat. It's impossible not to. It's bad enough just standing out here. Still, about 300 students from church groups in 10 states are tackling this tough job motivated by their faith. Uh, 112, 113. It's been seven or eight minutes, and it's moved up like 20, 22 degrees. It's almost at 120. And that's the rooftop temperature before the day got even hotter. This World Changers youth group traveled the distance to help St. Louisans needing a new roof. A paint job can make it look better, but a roof is going to keep leaks from coming in, and it's really going to change just their entire life and their lifestyle for their homes. And there's nothing easy about stripping a roof in extreme heat. We switch out about every 10, 15 minutes and just take water breaks. Some people will be on the roof 10, 15 minutes. They'll come off. Uh, we'll get off our water break and come out here and pick up. One break they take together with the homeowners they're helping, Percy and Deborah Ruffin. Y'all, you know, I hope y'all have a safe trip back, you know, out of town. And uh, thank y'all. They pray together. And the, pe the people that came to help us. And they pray for one another. Pray for Caroline that... Uh, she doesn't get dehydrated or get hurt or anything. And they work hard to take care of each other. Lord, I pray for our dehydration and our health and that you will just be with us. World Changers will be here working through the heat of the day all week long, replacing 26 rooftops. Live in St. Louis, Kathleen Berger, News Channel 5. In seconds, standing outside the patrol car, it's on. Officer Scott Roach is in pursuit. The driver was not wearing a seatbelt. St. Louis County Police, no stop you not wearing your seatbelt today. Because I had just gotten gas, and I did not click it back at the gas station because I was running like for a doctor's appointment. It's part of an aggressive week-long click-it-or-ticket campaign. Jennifer Regal says after her head-on collision with a drunk driver, she's a believer. The seatbelt saved her life. When she asks people why they don't wear theirs, she's heard it all. Um, people were afraid to get their clothes wrinkled. I, I can't believe some of the things that I've heard. It's clicking the belt. It's, it's very easy. In another DUI wreck, Amy Twelman was ejected from a car as a teenager. The other teen, also not wearing a seatbelt, died. I don't go the one block to my kid's bus stop without buckling up. Short distances are one of the top excuses for not wearing one. Officer Roach found that to be the case when pulling this driver over. I, I went to the bank and I, I got to go over here to get some blood drawn. And I, my office is about three blocks away, so probably that's probably why I forgot to put my seatbelt on. <laughs> they have the best excuse in the world, and they're all horrible. The number one reason I hear all the time is it's just not comfortable. And Roach tells them something they already know. You get uh, ejected, you get thrown right through here. But I never, in my 14-year career, I have never unbuckled a dead person from a seatbelt. Stepped up enforcement of click it or ticket is expected to last a week. This go around, the plan is to aggressively stop vehicles for violations on designated days every month. Okay. All right. It's a valuable reminder. Thank you, Kathleen. Shoppers are already glued to their cell phones, so why not put them to better use? Especially now that the finishing touch is being put on shopping mall holiday preps. That goes for your touch screen, too. You just go to the iPhone app store and download it by finding the club. And the St. Louis Galleria's mobile application is ready to go. Okay, let's say I'm at the coach store, but I want to go to J. Crew. So I zoom in on the map and I see it on the map, but I need to zoom in a little bit so I can see the store names and find out where I should go. So now that I see J. Crew is right ahead of me, I'm going to see if they're having a sale. So I click on sales and I scroll down. West County Center is getting on board too, along with Chesterfield, Mid Rivers, and more in the area, all owned by CBL and Associates Properties. The in mall navigation will be a little different than the Galleria's. Go ahead 20 feet, turn right. It'll, it'll be exactly like a GPS. So, mall directories may become passe for some shoppers. Or then I don't have to bother anybody and I can just look at my phone. <laughs> CBL malls will launch their free app before Thanksgiving for smartphones that can download from iTunes. The Galleria's app is available for iPhones and Android phones. If you don't have an iPhone or an Android, 
you can still do things the old-fashioned way. Excuse me, do you know where I can find Build-A-Bear? Uh, it's just right up that way, I think. Okay, thank you. In St. Louis, Kathleen Berger, News Channel 5. Stripping the Admiral. St. Louis and Jim Arno says he's documenting history. I have a book at home about uh, the Admiral, and it actually shows the... Uh, the work they did in, uh, I believe it was 81, when they actually rebuilt the top, and it's kind of sad to see them take it off. They'll be taking off close to 3,000 tons of materials, steel, iron, and the sheet metal exterior not as valuable, but like the rest, will be recycled. Right now, the upper deck has to go. A spokesperson for the Admiral's owners explains. Taking the deck house structure down so that we can reduce the vertical clearance requirements so that she'll fit under the bridges. Under this railroad bridge, the Mississippi may be below flood stage, but the water is still predicted to be too high for the Admiral to clear the Merchants Bridge near the McKinley Bridge. The only sure way for smooth sailing underneath is taking off the Admiral's top. The ship will be towed to a scrapyard in Alton. John Vaughn is a tugboat captain on the Mississippi, also getting some final shots of the Admiral. It's a piece of history and you know, unfortunately, there is there is, doesn't seem to be a place for it. It's an expensive thing to to take care of if someone were to have moved it. Moving it to an Alton scrapyard is an eight to ten hour tow. So many St. Louisans say they're sad to see it go. If a ship has a heart and soul, it's her propulsion system and her crew, and that's long gone for the Admiral. Kathleen Berger, News Channel Five. Pine Lawn police say they arrested the leader of a counterfeit money ring late last night. The Secret Service has now taken over the investigation, but police say it was an arrest at a local convenience store that took them down the fake money trail. BP service station on Jennings Station Road. A lot of business, a lot of money changing hands. Muzamel Hawk Condocker says last week he found counterfeit cash in his register. $120. A six pay, a six twenty dollar bill. So he told his family, who runs the counter, to use the counterfeit detector pen on everything. One night, a woman was pumping gas. She walked in, handing over two fake twenties like this one. The pen was used. And he marked it. He called me. I said, "Lock that door. Call the police." The son locked these doors, locking the woman inside the store. When police arrived, she was arrested and questioned. Pine Lawn police say she has ties to the counterfeit ringleader making the fake money inside a Wellston apartment. But the North Central Narcotic and Gang Task Force was already scoping the operation. Pine Lawn police made the bust, arresting two men in their 20s, finding thousands of bills fake 20s and everything used to make them. A state of the art type printer, it really, what it does, it, it, it brings the color into the money where it's hard to substantiate if the bills are real. Police say there's no telling how many people are victims or will still become victims. There are indications that uh, there's quite a bit that being put, placed out there in that community. Police have also identified several Craigslist victims. They say the leader of the ring would set up meetings with people selling electronics and other items, giving them fake 20s. The men are in federal custody. Charges are pending. Lisa? Unbelievable, Kathleen. Thank you.